Hi, everyone. Give me one second. I'm putting Instagram. You know how it goes now. Or not. <laughs> there it is. Okay, wonderful. Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Amig, your friendly rheumatologist from On Average MD. It's always such a pleasure to be here. Uh, I apologize for last week. Uh, I tried to uh, make a live after um, being quite a bit jet lag because I was in Europe uh, to see my family. And uh, and uh, apparently my, um, my computer put the uh, audio as something else. Uh, so I was silent <laughs> and I'm really sorry and I didn't see and uh, I apologize for that. So we will do this again. And uh, it was about fibromyalgia and I will do this again. But um, today, actually, uh, we we're talking about UCTD, which is undifferentiated connective tissue disorder. Uh, it's actually really cool. Uh, this is coming from someone who asked that question on the Rheumatology 101 YouTube channel. And I thought, oh, you know what? I've never talked about this, whereas I have talked about fibromyalgia. So um, this is a super cool opportunity to uh, learn about UCTD. And so I'm going to start with a story. Uh, you know how much I like stories. So um, I, not so recently, actually, it's been a while, uh, I had a patient that came one day that had uh, basically had seen some other rheumatologist and uh, was told that she had nothing. And the reason why uh, that that she didn't have a rheumatologic disorder um, and she couldn't understand because she was like, I have this joint pain. I've had joint pain for so many years now. And uh, looking a little bit further, her pain was actually quite inflammatory. And remember, worse in the morning, associated with more than 30 minutes of morning stiffness. And I think she had some swelling as well. The swelling that she had, though, wasn't particularly of the joint. It was really more of her fingers. She had like puffy fingers. And so, you know, then basically at that point, because it was an inflammatory arthritis, I basically called her UCTD because all of the tests that we did, everything else that we did was negative and that she didn't actually have what we call synovitis, which is the inflammation of the joint, right? She had puffy finger, but not so much synovitis. So really, already you're starting, if you have followed before some other episodes here, you're starting to hear where there's really an art about being a rheumatologist, right? What's the difference here in this patient that has an inflammatory arthritis that I'm going to call UCTD, undifferentiated connective tissue disorder, and another patient that would present with inflammatory arthritis and that I would call rheumatoid arthritis. And really here in this case, the main difference is that there is no synovitis, which is the inflammation of the joint, right? If you have inflammation of the joint, if you have synovitis, then we can call you, if uh, let's say all of your blood work is negative, right? If your blood work is negative and you have inflammatory arthritis, if you have synovitis, we can call you seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. If you have erosion on your x-ray, then it's even easier. You can say erosive seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. But it's when you do not have all of it, when you do not have um, the synovitis, but you have this inflammatory arthritis, that's when we can call you UCTD, undifferentiated, uh, undifferentiated, UCTD, undifferentiated connective tissue disorder. So where does that name come from? Well, undifferentiated, you understand. That's like when we don't know. We are saying you may have a connective tissue disorder, but we don't know which one. And then connective tissue disorder, I hate that word, because it's basically saying that you have a connective tissue issue. And sometimes it's not a connective tissue. Sometimes it's the skin. Sometimes it's it's uh, uh, it's you know it's the lungs. Uh, and so... You know, like we're trying to stay away from the word connective tissue disorder. It just hasn't stayed. What I mean by that is that it would be so much easier that you have an undifferentiated rheumatologic autoimmune disorder. That would make a lot more sense. And now suddenly you are like, oh, I get that. Whereas if you have UCTD or CTD, MCTD, mixed tissue, uh, connective tissue disorder, all of those CTD 
for people are like, wait, what? I have a connective, like I have connective tissue issue. And it doesn't necessarily mean that. And that's the problem, right? So uh, I think that that's something to realize is that the science has evolved so that we know that it's not necessarily a, just a CTD, connective tissue disorder. It can be just autoimmune rheumatologic. And it's easy to say that it's autoimmune if it's an inflammatory process then it is most likely autoimmune, right? Uh, once you have ruled out that this is an infection, once you've ruled out that it's a crystal arthropathy, so gout or pseudogout, then yeah, you're left off with this is inflammatory, so this is most likely an autoimmune process. And I think that that's really important. Now, let's go a little bit into what CTDs are, connective tissue disorders. So it's kind of this mixed bag of autoimmune rheumatologic disorders. So for example, uh, MCTD, mixed, uh, mixed connective tissue disorder, uh, uh, as well as even like sometimes some patients put lupus in that, uh, some other patients put RA in that, uh, etc. So all of those uh, uh, conditions, they are autoimmune rheumatologic related. And what that means by that is that they are going to have symptoms that can affect your whole body. What are some of those symptoms? So the main one is the joint pain, just because it's this, the easiest one to look at when it's, you know, from a rheumatology standpoint, there's not a lot of things that can cause you joint pain, right? So joint, that's the first one. Then you can have rashes. You can have the malar rash, right? So it's really like sometimes patients are like, well, I have a malar rash and I have joint pain, so then I must have lupus. And you're like, no, that's not... You don't have all of the things that make lupus yet. Maybe you will develop that, but not yet. And so that's important to realize that UCTD can involve into lupus. UCTD can involve into rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, UCTD can involve into scleroderma, right? And so that's like when you realize you're like, oh, I have an autoimmune disorder. I, it's just not fully... Uh, manifested yet. And the truth is, we don't want you to fully manifest it. We want to treat it as early as possible. Okay. That's really important uh, because we don't want it to fully manifest into potentially having more complications. So uh, I talked about, so you're, you're going to see, like if you were to listen to one of my previous uh, episodes on lupus, you would be like, oh, that sounds a lot like it, right? You can have hair loss, you can have the skin rashes, you can have oral ulcers, nasal ulcers, you can have fatigue, you can have lymph nodes, uh, you can have fever, you can have um, I, I have shortness of breath, you can have pleurisy, so that like inflammation around your uh, lungs, you can have inflammation around your heart, so that chest pain, shortness of breath, um, Etc. And so, and then you can have abnormalities on your blood work with low white blood cell, uh, um, low platelet as well, and so on. And so, this is where the art of becoming, like, of being a rheumatologist comes in, because in rheumatology you learn about all of those rheumatologic disorders. And it's you know, if you were Google or AI, you could just be like tick 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 tick. This is what you have. This is what you have. This is what you have. And that's really kind of what we do. We take a patient, we listen to them very carefully. We try to get all of your symptoms, really listen very well to what do you have? What are your symptoms? And then you, we put them in boxes and we're like, okay, some of those symptoms are more like lupus related. Some of those symptoms are more scleroderma related. Some of those symptoms are more rheumatoid arthritis related. Some of those symptoms are more spondyl arthropathy, ankylosing spondylitis related. And then you're like, okay, now that I have this, does the blood work confirms or infirms what's going on? And that's really where the art is. And in the case of UCTD, undifferentiated connective tissue disorder, and I'll do a, another one on MCTD, um, but on the in, when it comes to UCTD, what you have to remember is that you have some symptoms that are autoimmune related and that we think are autoimmune related, and you do not have yet all of the symptoms. We can't tell what this is yet, okay? 
So in the case of this patient that I was telling you about, that had an inflammatory arthritis but did not have synovitis, uh, and all of her blood work were normal, all of them. ANA was negative, rheumatoid factor was negative, CCP was negative, the DSDNA, the Smith, SSD, SSB, all of this was negative. We actually followed her. I started her on plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine, and she actually did a lot better. Like she had almost no more joint pain at six months. So that's really good, right? She had also less fatigue. And then basically the goal is to follow her and to make sure that she's not developing rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma, etc. And uh, so far she hasn't, and I don't think she will, but that is really where we're going to go. Some patients may develop you know, the synovitis, and then you're like, okay, now you have a seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. Some of the patients may develop full-blown lupus. And that's when you're like, okay, this is full-blown lupus, and we had to try. But the truth is that the vast majority of times, this is why I'm not going to do a second episode on UCTD. If we think you have UCTD, our first treatment of choice is plaquenil, okay? All right. So uh, I hope you have learned a lot. Actually, I love going to uh, uh, to the lives there. But um, hi, Dina. I think you are here. Very nice to see you, uh, Diana. Uh, and so, yeah, in the meantime, if you are uh, interested, I'm um, currently taking some new patients who are starting to be busy. And so it's probably going to be um, a little bit harder later on to get seen. So if you feel like you need to be seen uh, by a rheumatologist, don't hesitate, contact us. You can email us at info at onabridgemd.com. And um, until then, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them. I, you know, like this one, someone asked me, what is MCTD? What is UCTD? I thought I'm going to start with UCTD. We'll talk about MCTD after. Uh, and then I will, I promise you, I will do another episode on fibromyalgia. Uh, have a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye everyone.